So uh, good to be with you again. <laughs> um, I do feel the presence and the energy, and I hope you do too. I hope you feel a little slice of home when you uh, tune in here to our sanctuary. So today we're um, continuing on our series. Actually, we're finishing our series on these questions, the four questions that we're holding now. And and the que- you know the question really that that opens us to this is. You know, do we want to live from a place of innate peace, innate love, innate joy? Do we want to really tap more of that? Would you like to be the best that you could possibly be? Would you like to make the greatest impact and the greatest contribution in your short walk here on earth? Well, I know probably most of us, if we were sitting in this room together, we would hear some nods or see some nods and hear some yeses or amens because that's the kind of path that we all are on. So it's helpful, you know, to ask questions. And I was thinking about when I first became an ordained minister, you know, it was, you know, all the, the, when something new like that happens to you, and it's like the whole world now is open. You know, the world is your oyster. What will you be? What will you become? How will you realize your potential in this new role? You know, so I was sort of like Charles Fillmore, fairly sizzling with zeal and enthusiasm, you know, to spring forth and do the things that ought be done by me. He said that, by the way, when he was 94. I wasn't 94 when I um, became ordained, but I had that kind of feeling. And um, I remember James Trapp, who's actually a minister here in Sacramento now, had become the leader of our movement. He was our executive director at Unity Worldwide Ministries. And I really admire James's vision. He was a, he's a real visionary kind of guy. And uh, so I really wanted to soak it up, you know, all the seasoned ministers, you know, that had any wisdom to share. And, and something that James said really st- uh, stuck with me and has stuck with me for a long time. And he said that leadership isn't about knowing the answers. It's about asking the right questions. And so that that idea of, and it's not just leadership, but, you know, really life, what opens us up, what allows us to become alive is our curiosity and our ability to inquire within, our ability to reflect. So questions themselves are really helpful, I think, to our journey. Um, And it's asking the right questions. Well, whatever that means is, you know, we keep trying until it's like, oh yeah, that's the one. That's the one I'm going to take out on my nature immersion and walk with today. That's the one I'm going to journal on. That's the one I'm going to take into my meditation time. So um, so th- when we ask questions, it captures our attention. It focuses us in a little bit more. Uh, so there's many things that, that can come from that process. It opens doors, curiosity, doesn't it? It opens doors of the world, but also opens the doors of us, our own hearts, our own minds, our own possibilities. So today's question is, how will I realize my divine potential? Just a little question like that, right? <laughs> it's like a lifetime, right? Or lifetimes kind of question. It's one of those esoteric questions that if we are on an earnest spiritual journey, we're going to ask along the way. So today we're just going to kind of explore that from a couple different angles. So as we, even to ask that question, it presupposes something, doesn't it? So if we say, how will I realize my divine potential? It it shares in I, the thought, the belief that we already believe that we have divine potential, that we have an innate divinity in us that wants to be, that can be tapped. So, you know, we look to our teachers for this. In, in unity, we call Jesus our way shower. Um, there are many master teachers, and, and that's just kind of a, a term that we use because he points the way, right? And so one of the things that Jesus really showed us was how can you be a human being and, and really express in its fullness a consciousness of the divine or Christ consciousness, if you will. That's the, what we mean when we say Christ um, connected to Jesus. It's about that consciousness, that anointed kind of way of being that is anointed in the divinity that we are. 
and that shows up. You know, the difference between Jesus and us is he just didn't forget. (laughs) And we forget, remember, and forget, remember usually on our path. But what did he show us? He showed us what it's like to embody a life that is just completely grounded in faith, that stands in the principle of faith, that doesn't waver from that place. And that we can actually open ourselves up to let God speak through us, to let God act through us. It's a little bit of getting out of the way those parts of ourselves that we tend to identify as who we are, that more egoic side of us, and to, to move that, not, not to diminish it or eliminate it, but to use it so that it is, you know, that the master in charge here is, is the consciousness of this divinity, and the servant, if you will, is the ego is the rest of our being. So when we can line up in that way, we're getting closer and closer to actually um, realizing our divine potential. You know, Jesus did all these amazing things, right? Healed people of all kinds of ailments. Um, he, he helped, he pointed to how to, you know, bring in or bring up the disadvantage and include the disadvantaged. He welcomed the stranger. In other words, he even raised people from the dead. (laughs) And then he turned around and looked at us and said, these things you will do and greater things than these. It wasn't just a platitude. It was like, we all share this divine potential. We all can do these things and greater things, whatever it is that is yours to do akin to this kind of contribution to the world. So this brilliance isn't meant to be for the special ones or for those that we put on the pedestal. It's for all of us to be able to tap. So to discover that power within us, to act from that power within us is probably the most exhilarating and positively impactful thing we could possibly do with our lives. To focus here, to ask this question, then to live the question, to allow it to move through us is, is, is it, right? Because when we do that, not only are we contributing, but we will feel all that power and joy and peace and love and dwell in that kind of place. So no matter what life circumstances come, that's where our perspective will be. That's how we will show up. That's how we will feel and see. Yet, (laughs) a lot of us spend a fair amount of time hiding this innate truth, you know, putting our light under a bushel basket, if you will, making ourselves small, playing small in the world, holding back on our aspirations and our dreams. A lot of us just don't allow ourselves to tap that magnificence that we were born to be. For various reasons, we'll explore a little bit of that. How do you do that? You know, do you know how you, can can you think of ways that you block your own light? Ways that you show up and playing small? The ways that you are are holding back on the, the allness and the magnificence that wants to be known through you and as you? The point is to, to share it, to serve, right? So the point is to, to contribute to the world. And so it's, it's like a void is left in the universe when we hold back on that. So it's not, it's not of the ego to say, oh, how wonderful I am. It's actually quite humble to realize the power that we have been given and the possibility that we can be to be the divine on earth. So it wasn't until I was um, attending Unity for a while that I noticed a family pattern that my mom and my sister and I all did. When we would make a simple mistake, we would get so frustrated with ourselves that we would say, what's wrong with me? You know, with this sort of intensity, you know, maybe kind of a scowl like that, you know, and, and I I wouldn't have noticed that unconscious habit, I don't think, had I not come into New Thought teachings. But it was so clear then when I went home and saw it and thought, oh my gosh, I do that too. And and look how much I'm seeing that. And it's not the right question. The right question is what's right with me. That's what's going to put us on the path that we want to be on. Not, Not berating ourselves for small things, but giving ourselves grace and, and generosity and then looking at what's right with me, you know, so affirming that, make a list, write it down, you know, journal that idea of what's right with me and maybe make it a daily practice because the more we put what's right with us into our consciousness, the more we live that experience, 
the more that will be what shows up for us inside and out. So we, we are basically as divine as we're willing to see. We're, you know, that's, that's the, the limit that we put on for ourselves. I mean, there is an unlimited potential in us, but it's only as, as big as we're able to see it in terms of how it can be let out, expressed. And if it's hard for you to recognize your own divinity, take a moment to think about the people who love you the most. And, and they love you, you know, no matter. And so what is it, you know, that they say or that they demonstrate that they love about you so that you recognize that there is something there that you are contributing already and you begin to stoke that a little bit. Or think about if you're a, a grandparent or a parent, think about how when your children or grandchildren are at their best, how you look at them, how you see them, how you see both their, their greatness, their magnificence, how wonderful they are, the little genius, right? <laughs> All those things we say about our own children and grandchildren. And you also see the potential. You wonder what they will become, how they will grow, what they will come into. It's that kind of curiosity that we hold for ourselves, no matter how old we are, because we are an ever-evolving soul, that we look at ourselves in that same way, how pure we are, how, how precious we are, how the beautiful characteristics that we have, but also what, what could we become? What will we become when we tap this? If we look how God sees us, we would see just that, that, that kind of love, that kind of unending love that will buoy us up. So that's the aim to realizing our fullest potential, to notice where we put our gaze when we are looking upon ourselves and one another, because we can also help call forth the divinity in one another. So what will we become? I was taking a walk a few days ago and I came across this amazing acorn. I, I haven't seen, a, it, the picture doesn't show how big it was. It was really long, but um, there's a picture in front of you of this really green ripe acorn and it's laying on the dry earth. And it just stood out with that, you know, it's like it had a proud little hat on and this big, you know, proud feather of an oak leaf hanging out off the, the crown of that acorn. And I, I had it in my hand and I was just really looking at it. It felt like a, you know, like a manna from heaven. You know how that is? You find something on the trail, like it just kind of fell for you and it's there to bring, bring its atten your attention to it. And so I was just holding and I was thinking about the hope, you know, the hope that is in that that acorn for all of us, for all of us, for our world, that it is ripe with potential. It's ripe with possibility. We ourselves are bursting with that kind of life, you know, and then as I was holding it, I looked around and I bet you can guess what I could see, you know, these beautiful, mighty oak trees. The sun was actually, you know, it's pretty early in the day. The sun was just beaming through it. And it was like that majesty of holding this little acorn, this little proud acorn, and then looking up at what it could become. So it's that kind of knowing that is who we are and what we can become. And to wonder about it, you know, to, to just, just allow yourself to have some space just to wonder about what can I become? What's next? What, what, what is my next step to completely embodying and fully embracing my divinity? Well, Trina Bronk has a beautiful song for us, happens to be called Acorn, uh, in the wondering of what we can become. Let's take a listen. If an acorn becomes a tree, what will I be? If a river becomes a sea, where am I going? As my life unfurls in the shape it's meant to be, I surrender to a deeper knowing. I choose peace. I choose love. My choices extend to mysteries that I know not of. I step outside of my comfort 
its own. I look within and find myself home. If an acorn becomes a tree, what will I So once we glimpse that divine potential, as you may have glimpsed as you were moving through the landscape, that wide, expansive landscape, that as it, once, once we glimpse it, once we feel its presence, once we have just, even if it's a moment, we know it's there, there's really no going back. You know, that's the beauty of the spiritual journey is it's cumulative, right? So when we hit a benchmark, we don't slide back, you know, the old uh, Baptist term backsliding. <laughs> We don't really do that. I mean, we may go back to old habits that don't serve us, and then we realize, oh, that doesn't really serve me. But I believe that once we hit a, a level in our consciousness, our awakening, our, our, we have know now. We know now what it feels like. We know now what it looks like. We now have a sense of that. And so that, that's with us always. It's in our DNA. It's in our, it's in our thought system and in our, in our emotional body as well. And so it's something that we can tap at any time. And then we can become that passageway, right, through which joy and light can shine. So this is the heart, really, of our mission statement at Unity of Walnut Creek. You know, the full mission statement talks about, first, we are a loving, inclusive community. But the middle is the heart of it that says, expanding and living our divinity. And then the last part with, in sacred service for all. So that middle part, expanding and living our divinity, it's a pretty bold statement to say, this is what we are about, but this is what we are about. This is what we are doing. We are living and expanding our divinity every moment, not just every day or every week, but every moment there's an opportunity. As Paul once said, I die daily. You know, that's a shedding of the old so that the, the new, the shiny new can come through. So it's, we move from maybe I'm a poor, limited human being, that kind of thinking into, no, I have, you know, light to shine. I have value to contribute to the world. This is the truth of who I am. This is what I walk in now. So the main thing that stands in our way that underpins all this as we are trying to see it and think it and feel it and be it, the thing that, that sort of gets in the way is fear, right? It's always fear, isn't it? Um, and if fear is okay, you know, fear is going to come along and, and it's okay to embrace that, but we don't want it to block our path. We don't want it to block our light. And so you probably know this quote really well by Marianne Williamson, but it is a brilliant one and it really speaks to this. So I want to share it with you again. Maybe you'll hear it with new ears and maybe some of you are hearing it for the first time. So it's, it's a, about a paragraph long. So just, you know, sink in and receive, maybe as if you're hearing it just now dropping into your consciousness. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God, and your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will feel, will feel more secure around, oh, I'm sorry, other people won't feel insecure around you. 
We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. That's it, isn't it? (laughs) That's really what we fear. It's our brilliance. It's our divinity itself that we fear. It's the tapping, that power that we fear. What will I become? I don't know. It's uncertain. I don't know how my life will change. I don't know, you know, if I'll still have the same friends and family. I don't know if I'll be asked to move somewhere. I don't know if, you know, all those sort of human fears start to weigh us down as we begin to emerge into our divinity. So to recognize that, to call it out, to say, it's not that I'm afraid of failure or inadequacy. I'm afraid of success. I'm afraid of my divinity. I'm afraid of that full power of my potential. But there's nothing to fear. God is always with us, comforting and guiding and encouraging. It doesn't all have to happen at once. That's usually what we fear the most, right? There's going to be this like big experience explosive experience of life that lightning's going to strike down and you know there's going to be just you know all the stuff that happens that that feels like you know uh, the full effects of Hollywood and and it's probably not going to happen that way I mean it might but for most of us it's going to be a step-by-step emergence and a moment by moment sometimes whoa I can really feel the power I can really feel the presence I feel myself plugged in and turned on and tapped in and you know that just you can feel that energy moving through you can feel it around you and there'll be other times where it's like oh where did it go you know where is that that sense, that feeling I had. And that's just part of the journey. The mystics call it aridity on the path or, or even at its worst, dark night of the soul. So as we tap our divinity, there are you know, many, many aspects and expressions and ways in which that can show up for us, right? There's a whole spectrum of divine qualities that are available to us. Piero Ferrucci is a psychologist and author. He's really sort of psycho-spiritual, I'd say, in his um, teachings and his writing. I, I really enjoy him. And he wrote a book on kindness where he tells a story. He was about to give a seminar, and one of his students came up to him and said, Dr. Ferrucci, you have to make sure that you meet... Um, that guy over there with the white beard, he is so funny. I mean, this guy has just got the best sense of humor. And so Dr. Ferrucci goes up to the guy and he says, I understand you have quite a talent for making people laugh. And he said the man was very shy, he was very small, and he kind of gave a little sheepish grin and nodded a little bit and, and moved on. And uh, Dr. Ferrucci said he completely expected this guy to be really funny throughout the, you know, was looking for, he said he seemed like he has really cheerful demeanor and he's going to just be a really wonderful asset to, to what we're doing today. And sure enough, the guy was hilarious. I mean, he, he would give a funny example that was right on cue and then he'd follow it up with a joke and everybody was laughing and laughing and So after the seminar, um, Dr. Ferrucci went up to his student and he said, you were right, Mr. X was so funny. And the student says, oh, I didn't mean Mr. X, I meant Mr. Y. So, you know, it, it turns out that whatever it is that we call forth is available to us. Maybe that guy had never told a joke in his life, I don't know, or maybe he would have been too shy in that environment to do so but something was seen in him and expected. And it's that seeing and expectancy that allows it to come forth. And that's what we do with ourselves and that's how we help each other. Sometimes it's easier to see in each other so we can be that mirror for one another, the mirror of the positivity, the mirror of the potential, the mirror of those divine qualities that we can call forth in one another. It can be really fun, you know, to just think about all the things that you admire in others or think of maybe there's one particular, maybe you do love humor. I mean, we can certainly use humor in our world right now. So if you, you know, if that's something that really speaks to you, oh, I love being around funny people and I, you know, just, I don't really, you know, see that in myself. 
But if you, as we say, if you spot it, you got it, right? So if you see it, if you admire it in somebody else, it's there, it's untapped potential. And it's something that you can just, it's like downloading it from heaven. As a friend of mine used to say, you can just access anything, you know. And she said, you know, you want to be able to cook Indian? You've never cooked Indian before? Open that window and download how to cook Indian. It's available to us. All of that is available to us, whatever it is that we want to be able to do or be or embody. So it's just believing that and knowing that and, and opening it up so that it's fun, you know, so that, that we enjoy it. You know, have fun, spread joy, like we say every week. So to know if we're on the right path, we can ask more questions, right? As, as we go, we can ask ourselves, maybe before we act, we can ask ourselves how that particular thing is going, what is it stirring in us? What feeling is coming up? Now, I'll, I'll say nine times out of 10, my experience is if there's a scary, excited feeling to it, maybe even 10 out of 10, it's going to tap some of your divine potential. So some of that fear is natural, but it's got that, I don't know, I like to call it scary excited. I don't know what else to call it. It's got sort of a different feel to it because there's anticipation and excitement, but we're nervous too, you know, as, as we should be when we're stepping into something big. And so if that's present, you're probably on the cusp of moving towards something that's tapping more of that divine potential in you. We can obviously move more. We can ask ourselves, is this going to move me further to the light or further into the darkness? And obviously we want to move into the light. That's, that's an, a no brainer in a way, but then, you know, there are times when we truly are choosing things that we know are going to move us further into darkness that are going to spiral us down into a place where we're not going to feel very good or not be able to, to tap some of these kinds of qualities we're talking about. And we can ask, does what I'm about to do or what I'm doing, does it make me feel alive? If there's an aliveness, that's a good sign too that we're on the right path. If it's sort of dead or flat, not so much, right? So all of these can be markers for us of these kind of emotional states of, of scary, excited, or passion that's present for us, a sense of being on purpose. These are all a, a sense of connection. These are all sort of signs that we are on the right path to realizing our divine potential, to opening that up further to us. And when I say our divine potential, I really mean our divine potential. I feel like I can hardly even speak in individual terms right now because, you know, for so long our, our spirituality has been talked about in individual and personal terms, but it's not where we are in the world anymore. You know, so the, the world is now reflecting back to us the absolute significance. In fact, frankly, we will perish if we don't get it, that we are one family, that we belong to each other, that we need each other, that we move together as one. And so this isn't so much an individual journey. What we do as individuals contributes or takes away, detracts from the wholeness of, of who we are as a human family or as, as all, all life. So that part, I think, is, is really key for us to recognize it's not only an opportunity to contribute, but it's really a responsibility. I mean, it's our ability to respond to the world about us, to recognize that we're all in this together, whatever this is. <laughs> and if the pandemic hasn't shown us that, or the racial justice movement hasn't shown us that, I'm not sure what will. Um, but these things are very, the fires, perhaps, I mean, all these things are, are expressions of, you must collaborate, you must move together, you must, you know, we depend on each other, basically. So. Enough said about that. <laughs> so like that acorn, like that acorn that has that potential in it, we can tap it and be the majesty of an oak tree, so to speak. We have that kind of immense potential. So let's not block the sun, but let's instead lift our branches up and expand ourselves into all that we can be. Let's allow the divine to move through us and as us so that we can become what we truly were born to be, what we came here to earth to do and to be and to embody. As we realize our divine potential, as you realize your divine potential, we all will advance a little bit more toward that because we're all connected. So 
we know this truth that I am divine. We know this truth, right? So as we speak it and we know it and we see it, we can be it. And so too can we all be it. We can individually be it and collectively be it. So let's speak this affirmation together as, as we sign off from the message and just really feel this and maybe carry it with you throughout the week. Together, I am divine. I see it so I can be it, so we can be it, and so it is. Bless you.